Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. In today's problem, we will be diagonalizing a three by three matrix and finding a basis of eigenvectors that puts it in that diagonal form. Now, this matrix does have a repeated eigenvalue. So beforehand, we don't even know if it's diagonalizable at all, but we'll be able to show that it is diagonalizable by getting that basis of eigenvectors. So the first thing we need to do is find the eigenvalues, which we do by finding the characteristic polynomial of the matrix and then finding the roots of that polynomial. So let's get started. So here is the matrix a minus lambda i and we're taking its determinant, which I denote with the straight bars. And the best way to find the determinant of this matrix is to go along this row here because there are two zeros. So we're gonna have five minus lambda times its cofactor matrix, I don't remember what it's called, times the, the determinant of the matrix that we get when we remove the third row and third column. So if we do that, we're gonna get five minus lambda times the determinant of this matrix here, which is four minus lambda times five minus lambda minus zero times two, which is zero. So we just get four minus lambda, five minus lambda. And luckily for us, this cubic is already in its factored form. So we can see the eigenvalues straight away. The eigenvalues are four and five, which is a multiplicity two. It's the repeated eigenvalue. So the next thing to do is to look for the basis of eigenvectors. Let's go ahead and handle the eigenvectors for five first, because we need to find two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to five, just to know that this matrix is diagonalizable at all. If we can't do that, then we can't build a full basis of eigenvectors. And so this matrix fails to be diagonalizable. So let's do that first. The eigenvectors corresponding to five or the vectors that get wiped out by the matrix A minus five I, or just the matrix A with fives subtracted from the diagonal. So if we write that out more fully, we get this. So here's some vector V with coordinates V1, V2, V3. I'm multiplying it by A minus five I, and I'm setting that equal to zero. Now let's look at the system of equations that we get as a result of this. The last equation simply states that zero V1 plus zero V2 plus zero V3 equals zero, but that's no information whatsoever. So I just won't write that equation. And these two equations say the same thing. So V2 is not involved in these restrictions at all. So it is a completely free variable. And V1 is determined by V3. So V3 is another free variable. Since we have two free variables, that tells us that we can pick two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to five. The eigenspace of the eigenvalue five is two dimensional because there are two free variables. So let's pick some eigenvectors. The way we do that is we're gonna pick one for one of the free variables and zero for the other. So let's pick one for V3. And let's pick zero for the other free variable, V2. And V1 is determined by V3, it is going to be negative two. So here is an eigenvector. Now do the opposite, let's pick zero for V3 Let's pick one for V2 and V1 is determined by V3. It's negative two times V3, so it is zero. So here are the two eigenvectors that we can use to form our basis that corresponds to the eigenvalue of five. Now we will find the third eigenvector for our basis of eigenvectors by finding an eigenvector corresponding to the other eigenvalue four. The eigenvectors corresponding to four 
are the vectors that get wiped out by the matrix A minus 4i, which, are, which is the matrix of A with 4 subtracted from the diagonal. So let's write this out. Now we'll look at the system of equations that we get from this matrix operation. So the first equation we get says that 0v1 plus 0v2 plus negative 2v3 equals 0. But if negative 2v3 is 0, then v3 is 0. The second equation says that 2v1 plus v2 plus 4v3 is 0. We know v3 is 0, so it just says that 2v1 plus v2 is 0. And the final equation simply states that v3 is 0, which we already knew. So here is the system of equations or the restrictions put on the coordinates to make v an eigenvector for 4. So v3 is 0 and 2v1 plus v2 equals 0. So we are only going to have one free variable as expected. v3 is fixed as 0 and we can pick either v1 or v2 to act as the free variable. So we'll solve for v2. So we have these restrictions on the eigenvectors corresponding to four. The third entry has to be zero and v2 has to be negative two v1. So let's pick an eigenvector. v3 is zero. We will pick v1 to be one and that makes v2 negative two. So here's the eigenvector corresponding to four. We now have a full basis of eigenvectors and from that we can build the matrix Q. The matrix Q is just gonna be the matrix with our basis vectors as columns. So here's the matrix Q. The order I chose is important because it's gonna affect where the eigenvalues are along the diagonal. I picked the eigenvector for four to be first and then the two for five to be second. So the diagonal matrix D looks like this. And the expression that we want states the following. And so that completes the problem. We have found the eigenvalues four and five with a multiplicity of two. We found a complete basis of eigenvectors and so this Q is a change of basis matrix, which basically converts the space into a basis that expresses this linear transformation as a diagonal matrix. That's the idea behind similar matrices. It means that the only difference between the two is a change of basis. So that finishes this problem. We're done here. If you have any problems you'd like to see me work next week, Leave them in the comments below and I'll pick out some of my favorites. They can be whatever you want as long as they're within my capabilities. But that's going to do it for this one. I'll see you guys next time.